Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So I know I'm really late on this video because I'm a little bit of a slacker, so let's just dive right into it. These are the books that I want to read in the coming year. Now, since it's already the end of February, and maybe early March by the time I'm posting this, some of these books I have already read. But let's just start off with the first book, The Red Badge of Courage, and this is by Stephen Crane. So this is a book I read way back in high school that I remembered I really, really enjoyed reading. I don't really remember what it's about other than the fact that it's about war. I think the Civil War, maybe the Revolutionary War. So I definitely want to read this book again and see if I still like it. Especially since it's a classic, so looking forward to this. Next, we have a very, very old copy of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, and this is by Lewis Carroll. Now, this is a book I've never read before, but it is a classic. It is a children's book, so I did want to read this book this year. I've actually already read this book since it is a pretty short book. And I gotta say, not, not a fan. It is a children's book, so it's not obviously for my demographic, but... Yeah, definitely not for me, so a little disappointed in that. But again, children's books, so, you know, what was I expecting? You know, anyways. Next, we have the sequel to that book, which is Through the Looking Gra <laughs> Through the Looking Glass. Not grass, glass. Sequel to Alice in Wonderland. Again, I did already read this book, and again, didn't really like it. Probably because it's a children's book, not for my demographic, but, you know, whatever. Wanted to read it because it is a classic. I'm still happy that I did get a chance to read it because, you know, it's kind of interesting reading these really old classic books because you can see where some of these characters that you know from other media, actually where they came from, like Tweedledee and Tweedledum, had no idea that came from this book. So that's kind of neat, but didn't really enjoy the book that much. And next we have this, The Sign of the Four by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. This is another Sherlock Holmes book. And again, I've actually already read this book. And just like every other Sherlock Holmes book I've read, I absolutely love this book. Fantastic. Recommended 100%. I really look forward to reading more Sherlock Holmes books. I don't have that many more. In fact, I've read all of the, the novels. But I do have a couple more of his uh, collection of short stories I need to read. But uh, this was a fantastic book. And another book that, again, I've already read, Animal Farm by George Orwell. This, again, was a book that I remembered I really liked or I really enjoyed back in high school. But I didn't have much memory of it, so I wanted to read it again. And I gotta say pretty good book. I actually really enjoyed that. It's a really quick book too. It's only like, I don't know, barely over a hundred pages and pretty tiny book at that. So fantastic book. Definitely recommend it. And glad I read it this year. Okay, now we're going to be getting into a lot of books that I haven't read yet. So we have this, Crime and Punishment by Dostoevsky. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. This book I've tried reading multiple times, including last year, and I just haven't been able to, to finish reading it. I just, it hasn't captured me. It's kind of a difficult read. It hasn't, it hasn't made me want to continue reading it, but I really do want to actually read more than the first 10, 15 pages of this book because this is an absolute classic. So I really hope this year I can read this book, I can finish this book, and hopefully I enjoy it. I imagine I will once I actually get into it and really get, you know, involved in the story and what's going on because it is a classic. So I'm going to try to read that, read this book this year. <laughs> Wish me luck because so far I've had this book for years, haven't been able to read through the whole thing yet. So maybe this will be the year. I don't know. We'll see. But looking forward to it if I can, if I finally can tackle it. And then a book that's kind of new to my collection, but a book I've never read before, is this. The Pictures of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. Again, another classic. Never read this book before. Don't really know anything about it. All I know is that it is a classic, really famous, probably Oscar Wilde's most famous book he's written, 
at least I think, or at least it's up there with his most popular books. But I uh, definitely want to try giving this book a read, and hopefully it's pretty good. I imagine it will be, because again, it's a classic. Oh, I did actually already read this book. Okay. So, so this is probably, I think, the yeah, this is the last book that I've already read that I want to read this year. This is The Scarlet Letter by Jonathan, or not Jonathan Swift, sorry, Nathaniel Hawthorne. Again, a classic. This is a book I read in high school that I remember I remembered I enjoyed reading, but I didn't have much memory of it. So I wanted to read it again, and I'm really glad I did because this is indeed a classic. I really enjoyed this book. It's actually probably ranked pretty high, at least so far on my list. The Sign of the Four is actually technically my, my favorite book so far I've read this year, but I'm going to put this at number two so far. Really, really good book. So I would recommend anyone to read this. Pretty good. And then another classic book. This is The Diary of Anne Frank. Now, this is another book I've had in my collection for probably the last couple years, but I just haven't gotten around to reading it because it is kind of a depressing book. Obviously, the subject matter is pretty, uh, pretty uh, depressing, honestly. But I do want to read this book because I've had it for a while. It is a classic. It's a very important book from a historical point of view. So... I'm going to try to get through this book this year as well, so hopefully I can, but, um, you know, looking forward to it again because another classic and very historically important book, so cool. And here we have a brand new book I actually just recently bought. This is The Andromeda Strain by Michael... Critton? Critchton? I don't know how to pronounce his last name, sorry. Uh, he's actually the author of Jurassic Park, which I'm sure everyone's heard of. I don't have his Jurassic Park novel, though. I really should get that because I love the movie. I imagine I would like the book, and since that is his most popular book, probably pretty good. This, I think, is his, probably his second most popular book. I don't know much about it, but I saw it on the bookshelf and I just kind of bought it spontaneously. So, you know, I want to end up reading this book since I think it would be pretty good. So we'll see. And the next book we have on my list that I want to read for this year is The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. Now, this is a book I've had for, I've had this book for probably four, five years, maybe even longer. I never got around to reading this book because I was kind of pushing it off, waiting for hope, hopefully for Ruthfuss to finish the trilogy since this is the first book in his, is it the King Killers Chronicles? Something like that. Um, it, it's a trilogy that he's writing. He has this book, which is the first one, the second book, which came out a while ago, but his third book he hasn't finished yet, and it's been a very, very, very long time. So I'm kind of getting tired of just waiting for him to finish that third book. So I think I'm just going to read this book since I have heard very good things about it. Um, so hopefully I enjoy it as well, and since it's been in my bookcase for so long, I don't like having books on my bookcase, especially for four or five years that I haven't read. It bothers me. So <laughs> I'm going to try to read this book. So that is on my um, to read list for 2024. And next we have this, A Crown of Swords by Robert Jordan. This is the seventh book in the Wheel of Time series. Now, normally I try to read two Wheel of Time series books a year. Last year, I only read one, though, because I didn't really like the book that much. I actually thought it was pretty boring and very, very slow, and it ended up taking me, like, three months to read through that single book. This book, so far, again, is pretty slow. I don't think it's as slow as the uh, the sixth book in his series. Sorry, I forget the name of what it was. But again, it's still a pretty slow book. Actually, you can tell in this, in this I'm, I'm currently in the process of reading it. I'm kind of close to getting done, done it. So far, I think it's okay, but 
man, the Wheel of Time series really is starting to drag on in these later novels. So I do want to read this book. I try to read two a year. And since I only read one last year, I actually want to read three this year. So I want to read this book, which is what I'm currently reading right now. And then I want to read the eighth book. That's eighth, right? Yeah. The eighth book, which is The Path of Daggers. And then after this book, I then want to read the ninth book, which is Winter's Heart. Now, obviously, that's a lot of, lot of Robert Jordan, but I do like trying to get through two books a year. That way I can hopefully get through the entire series in the next, well, few years, especially since I'm only currently on book seven. I'm, what, like halfway through the series? Very long series, but a series I do enjoy. Although these last couple books have been kind of a little too slow for me. I just want kind of want him to get to the point <laughs> and this story to go a little bit faster. And unfortunately, I don't think that's going to happen. But since I only read one last year, I'm going to really try to read these three this year. So we'll see how that goes. Next, we have Brandon Sanderson. Now, at the end of last year, I ended up taking a break on Brandon Sanderson because the last book I read from him was the uh, the Frugal Wizard's Guidebook to, uh, to Medieval England. Yeah, Frugal Wizard's Guidebook to Medieval England, which was his second book in his four, uh, four mystery novels from last year, Secret Projects from last year. After I finished reading that book, I decided I wanted a break from Brandon Sanderson because I really, really did not like that book from last year. In fact, I ranked that as my least favorite book from last year. And that was a while ago. I mean, that was what, probably in May when I finished that. So I have taken a pretty long Sanderson break. However, I do have his other two secret novel uh, projects, his two secret novel books from his four he originally wrote. So there's this one, The Sunlit Man. As you can see, it's still actually... Uh, <laughs> it's still wrapped up in the in the shrink wrap, but I want to read this book and then his other secret novel project book is this which is Yumi and the Nightma Nightmare Painter. So both of these books I have heard at least pretty good things about both of these books. From what I've read online, I, I don't really like reading a, a lot of reviews and stuff online about other books because I like to go on as blind as I possibly can. But from what I've read online is that the Frugal Wizard's Guidebook is pretty much everyone's least favorite Sanderson book. Um, Tress of the Emerald Sea, which was his other secret novel project book, uh, that is, I think, everyone's favorite but these two were also pretty highly ranked, I think. So I'm going to try to read these books. Hopefully I like them. I haven't really been that much of a fan of Sanderson, at least based off of all the books I've read from him. I, I haven't read a ton of his books, um, especially his, uh, his, his main series, his Stormlight Archive series. I do need to read those since that is his like magnum opus. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to try to get back into Brandon Sanderson. I'm going to try to do that by reading these two books since they have been on my bookshelf. So these two, The Sunlit Man and Yumi and The Nightmare Painter. So we'll see if we like those. Hopefully I do. Uh, next, we are getting into some slightly different books. Whoops. We are getting into some slightly different books, and this is going to be nonfiction uh, astronomy-related books. This is Stephen Hawking's The Grand Design. Last year I ended up reading Stephen Hawking's A Brief History of Time, and I absolutely loved that book. It was ranked either two or three as my, or second or third as my favorite book from last year. It wasn't my number one, but it was either second or third. I think it was my second favorite uh, from last year, so. I do have a couple other Stephen Hawking's book, Stephen Hawking's books that I do want to read, but this is the uh, the main one I want to read 
this year, which is the grand design. So hopefully I like this book. And then we have a couple other, um, these aren't Stephen Hawking's books. These are Carl Sagan books, but uh, again, astronomy related books. This is a very, very, very old book that's missing its, uh, its dust jacket, but this is The Dragons of Eden by Carl Sagan. Is that right side up? Nope. <laughs> the Dragons of Eden by Carl Sagan. I gotta say, absolutely love everything I've read by Carl Sagan. His Cosmos book, not to mention the series from way back in the day. <sighs> Fantastic. I love it so much. Uh, the Demon Haunted World by Carl Sagan. Ugh, that is a very, very good book. So I have some pretty high hopes for this, The Dragons of Eden. I also have <sighs> Pale Blue Dot by Carl Sagan, another absolute classic that he wrote a long time ago, what, probably like the late, eh, maybe the early 90s? Eh, 94, so the mid 90s, but again, an absolute classic, and I do love Carl Sagan, so definitely wanna read this book, The Dragons the Dragons of Eden, and this last book. Oh, never mind. This isn't Carl Sagan. This is another Stephen Hawking book. Uh, this is The Universe in a Nutshell. Okay, yeah, that's that's right. So yeah, I had I have two Stephen Hawking's Hawking books that I want to read. Two books from Carl Sagan that I want to read. So this is The Universe in a Nutshell. Uh, don't really know much about this book, but. Definitely want to read these two by Stephen Hawking and then the two by Carl Sagan because I got to say, I actually, I find astronomy absolutely fascinating. I love reading about it, even though a lot of times it is over my head, especially when they get into like talking about how, you know, time and travel and, and gravity and speed of light and how all those things come together, they converge. I don't even know. It's very complicating, but it's absolutely fascinating. I love reading about it, love learning about it. So yeah, hopefully I like this book as well. And yeah, there we go. Stack one, stack two. These are all the books that I am hoping to read in 2024. I do have quite a lot more books that I need to read that I'm that are on my bookshelf that I haven't read before, but I don't like to overexert myself. To be perfectly honest, I do work full time. I have two young kids, a four year old and a one year old, so my free time is non existent. I mean, it's not non existent, but it's limited, very limited. So last year I only read like a dozen books, which isn't a lot, and this year this is quite a few books. Let's see how many it is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 20. So 20 books. That is going to be my goal for uh, reading this year. I got some classics. I have some astronomy. I have some fantasy. I don't have any science fiction, do I? I don't. Maybe I need to add a science fiction book to this list. Maybe I will. I do have a bunch of science fiction books upstairs, like The Prelude to Foundation by Isaac Asimov. I love his Foundation trilogy. Maybe one of my favorite trilogy books ever. Really, really good. So The Prelude is the prequel to that original trilogy, so maybe I'll add that to my list as well. We'll see. Anyways, let me know what you all think down in the comments below. If you have any recommendations on any of these books that I should read first, or at least once I finish reading uh, this, uh, I already forgot the title of it, A Crown of Swords. So once I finish reading A Crown of Swords by Robert Jordan, if you have any recommendations on which books, which book I should read next, if you think I should just go right from that to the next Wheel of Time book, or if you think I should read a classic or an astronomy book, or, you know, just let me know if you've read any of these books and some of them are your favorite or what you think. Let me know down below in the comments and I'll see y'all again next time. Bye for now.